mind is the molder of our personal and communal world. Every event we perceive through our senses is analyzed, evaluated and registered in the mind as pleasant, unpleasant or neutral. Our belief systems seek to determine whether each perceived input is something which will protect or endanger our security, self-worth and our freedom. When life's events are interpreted by our programmed mind as threatening, fearful or unpleasant, we experience a state of anxiety and tension. When anxiety and nervous tension become a chronic situation, then the body and mind are gradually worn down into a state of weakness and ill health. A psychosomatic illness is created. The energy flow, concentration and clarity of the mind are disturbed. Organs begin to malfunction. Negative emotional states such as depression, bitterness, fear, anger, hate, envy, jealousy and resentment dominate the mind. Our relationships begin to deteriorate and a feeling of alienation can set it. It is time for attitude therapy. Attitude therapy. In attitude therapy, we transform attitudes, beliefs or perceptions which prevent us from experiencing health, happiness and harmony. Negative, life-destroying attitudes are replaced by positive life-building ones. Let us consider some of these beneficial attitudes. 1. I alone am responsible for my life, health and happiness. We create our health, illness, happiness, unhappiness, unity, alienation, joys, and problems through our way of thinking, behaving, eating, sleeping, living and interacting. When we eat poorly, do not exercise sleep too little or too much, do not breathe properly and waste our mental and emotional energy on so many superficial pursuits. We will naturally lose our health and peace of mind. We create our reality in four basic ways. First, our choices, thoughts, actions and reactions of the past create corresponding results in our present life and psychosomatic state. If in fact there is such a reality as reincarnation, then our past will also include all our choices of past lives. Thus, a considerable amount of our present reality is dictated by our previous actions, choices and reactions. Second, we have chosen, as souls, to learn certain lessons at each stage of our evolutionary process. If we have chosen to learn self-acceptance it is natural to experience rejection from others so that we can develop inner self-worth. If we have chosen to develop self-confidence, we will naturally have chosen to experience an absence of external support. If we have chosen to learn forgiveness and unconditional love, we will have made a secret soul agreement with others to harm us so that we can then develop that type of forgiveness and love. Third, our present conscious and subconscious beliefs are perhaps the greatest cause of our preset reality. We attract to ourselves behaviors, events and life situations, which in some way mirror or vibrate sympathetically with how we think and feel in the present. Our present positive and negative conscious and subconscious beliefs, desires, needs, expectations and emotions such as fear, guilt, shame, love, peace and anger, all combine to attract to us a corresponding external, and certainly internal, reality. Fourth, in addition to attracting certain realities, we also interpret what is happening according to our beliefs. We give greater or lesser importance to specific issues and thus allow them to affect our state of mind to a greater or lesser degree. When we give great importance to our appearance or to how others perceive us or behave towards us, then our reality will change greatly every time we receive an input concerning our appearance or what others think. Of these four factors we have control over only the last two at this point in time. We cannot change our past choices, and our soul lessons are an integral part of our presence in these bodies. Thus, we are left with changing our present conscious and subconscious beliefs.
Firstly, this will allow us to attract more positive behaviors, events and situations toward our being. Secondly, we will perceive life more positively so that even when we are not getting our preferred reality, we feel secure, worthy and free to be ourselves. This is our point of power. Changing what we believe about life, others and most important of all, ourselves. Some of those alternative ways of perceiving life will be described in this video. Some of them are. We alone are responsible for our lives, health and happiness as individuals and as a group. We have the inner power and resourcefulness to deal with whatever life brings us. Our self-worth is a function on our inner being and has nothing to do with appearance, affluence, position, knowledge or what others think. Life is always giving us exactly what we need to create happiness and to continue our evolutionary process. We are free to live our lives according to our own inner ideals and goals, and to change our reality if we chose to. We deeply love and seek to help our loved ones, while simultaneously remembering they are souls in the process of evolution, who have chosen their specific lessons. We are all eternal souls in the evolutionary process of rediscovering and manifesting our inner divine nature. Each being is divine creation and deserves our love and respect and including us. Our life purpose is to individually and collectively transform our reality into a more enlightened and loving one. Our basic lesson is love. All of this universe is an expression of the one universal omnipresent and omnipotent being consciousness. We as co-creators with the divine have been created to bless, spiritualize and transform the material world. Three steps to managing skin allergies. An effective approach to managing skin allergies has three components. Firstly, you must understand the condition. Then you must discover if anything is triggering your skin reaction. And thirdly, you must look after your skin. Many people think that allergies only affect the respiratory or digestive systems, but they can also affect your largest organ, your skin. As with other allergies, the immune system overreacts to the presence of certain substances and releases inflammation producing chemicals. Do some research and talk to your doctor. You can be confident of controlling your skin condition better if you are sure you understand what causes it. The second component in managing a skin allergy is identifying then eliminating the allergens and irritants that start the itching scratching cycle. There are over 3000 known triggers for skin allergies. Many are natural, but there are plenty of man-made ones too. A common man-made trigger is latex, which comes from the sap of the Brazilian rubber tree. The natural proteins and those added in the manufacturing process can trigger an allergic reaction. Most people are aware that this can lead to reactions if you wear latex gloves. However, latex is also present in baby pacifiers, balloons, pencil erasers, and elastic bands in undergarments. There can also be problems when latex particles become airborne and are inhaled. If you have a latex allergy, try to avoid the material and use vinyl or plastic where possible. Nickel is another trigger. In addition to the obvious nickel containing metallic objects like coins and jewelry, nickel is also present in everyday objects like scissors, bathroom and kitchen cabinet handles, and zippers. Mascara, eyeshadow and eye pencils also contain nickel. Experts estimate that the number of people suffering from a nickel allergy has risen about 40% in the last decade. Much of this is believed to be due to the popularity of body piercing. Some foods also have natural nickel content, and people who suffer severe symptoms may need to restrict their diet under medical supervision. At present there is no way to desensitize a person with a nickel allergy. Avoidance is the best strategy. The third component of effective management is looking after your skin. The easiest thing to do is to keep your fingernails short to reduce the damage caused by scratching. Managing your skin's condition means firstly moisturizing and softening the skin to ensure it does not dry out. 
Your doctor may recommend you use topical corticosteroid preparations to control the inflammation. When you take a bath soak in lukewarm water for 20 to 30 minutes. Do not have hot baths or showers, as the heat will increase skin dryness and itching. You can add oatmeal or baking soda to the bath for a soothing effect, though it does not help moisturize the skin. Use a mild soap or a non-soap cleanser with neutral pH, pH 7. If you wish to add bath oils do so after you have been in the water so that it can seal in the moisture. Do not use bubble baths as they can form a barrier that stops the bath water moisturizing your skin. After the bath dry yourself by patting your skin with a soft towel. This helps retain moisture. Immediately after drying your skin, apply a lotion or emollient cream to help your skin retain the moisture. To look after your skin, you will also need to avoid situations where you will experience extreme physical contact, heavy perspiration, or heavy clothing. This may mean avoiding some sports. Swimming is permissible if you rinse the chlorine from your skin as soon as you leave the pool and use a moisturizer after drying yourself. Follow these three steps and you will be able to control your skin allergy and minimize its impact on your everyday life. Self-confidence is not something that holds me back, in fact I really appreciate the level of confidence I enjoy and feel that I can make the choices and decisions I want, without a feeling of concern nor overriding fear. That is not to say that I am always successful, but I realize that even by trying, I am moving closer to a higher level of confidence. I did not always have a high level of self-confidence. When I was younger, I had a lot of self-confidence in my ability to do well in football and track but my confidence in my ability to deal with life's challenges was quite low. This was probably caused by a fear of not measuring up to my parents' expectations and a little bit of social shyness. However, as I got older, I realized that my parents only wanted me to be healthy and to try my best at everything I did. As a member of a large community, I had a lot of social interaction with people from all walks of life and I lost most of my shyness. My job also required that I respond to all different kinds of situations. The more success I had, the more my self-confidence rose. Self-confidence or confidence in yourself means that you know that you can do whatever task you are faced with. This does not mean that you have to do every task by yourself. It means that the ones you know you can do by yourself, you do, and the ones where you need help, you know how to find it. Confidence is a learned trait, not something you are born with. It is the force which pushes you forward and allows you to find the right path amidst the confusion and chaos of life. Confidence is the necessity you must have to assist you in realizing your dreams and goals. We all have the power of self-confidence within us. Sadly, many leave it unused for long periods of time, while others use it sparingly like a miser forget about past worries and build the power of self-confidence within you. Since you can't change the mistakes of the past, don't let them spoil the present or dim the future. The first thing that you must practice is, don't hate yourself before deciding to practice self-confidence. It is very difficult to become self-confident if you do not like yourself. Remember, just like everyone else, you were born into this world for a specific reason. Think about the things that you are good at doing. Work at becoming better at them. Don't worry about the things that you are not very good at. As a very successful person I was talking to recently said, why spend your limited time here on earth working on things you are not good at? Instead perfect the things you are good at and hire someone to do the things you are not good at. Mediocrity and poor performance are often due to low self-confidence, but it is not something you have to live with. You can build your self-confidence by challenging yourself to take action and do something. Even though you feel as if you lack confidence, it doesn't mean other people can tell. Building good self-confidence is a wonderful thing, and it's much easier than you'd imagine. One of the easiest ways of building self-confidence is to take baby steps. What I mean by this is to set small goals or projects that you have to complete. Each time you do one in the time you have set for yourself, you will build your self-confidence. 
the accumulation of small victories will convince your subconscious mind that you can do what you set out to do. It will then convince your conscious mind that you have a lot of capabilities and your self-confidence will grow. If you continue to do this over a period of months, you will find that your self-confidence becomes greatly improved. With improved self-confidence you can take on bigger projects and goals, and as these are completed your self-confidence will grow by leaps and bounds. So what other techniques are available to anyone wishing to develop more self-confidence? It should be no surprise to you when I tell you that the single most influential person on your self-confidence is you, or more specifically, your mind. This probably sounds very basic, but are you using your own thoughts to reinforce your self-confidence and self-esteem? Talk positively to yourself all the time. Become your own best friend and supporter. Encourage yourself to do more. Congratulate yourself on every small or large victory. Remember that very few people are successful the first time they try to do something. You didn't try to bike the first time you tried. Thomas Edison didn't invent the light bulb on his first attempt either. It took him more than 10,000 attempts before he made the first successful light bulb, and it only lasted a few minutes. The biggest thing to remember is that you are never defeated in doing anything you want to do until you quit. Donald Trump, during a recent interview, stated that he was richer than most people because he failed more times than most. However, in his case, he learned from his mistakes and tried again. Why? Because he was confident that he could do what he wanted to do if he just continued trying. You are no different from Donald Trump. Do what he did. Just keep trying until you succeed. When you do, your self-confidence will soar, and you will realize that you can do anything you want to as long as you continue trying. Another technique is to watch other people. When you see someone that stands upright and moves with a sense of purpose, watch to see if they give you the impression that they have a lot of confidence. If they do, duplicate the physical characteristics of these confident people, and you will start to gain the confidence they display. One thing that you must ensure that you do not do is listen to people who talk down to you or try to tell you that you cannot do something. Usually these people can't do these things themselves, so they try to convince others that they can't do them either. If something like this keeps happening to you, tune these people out and stop associating with them. Your inner confidence needs to be liberated from this constant barrage of negative thoughts and statements from the dream stealers around you. Your limitations are in your mind, not in your reality. Here are some tips for everyday practice. If you want to develop and build confidence, associate with positive uplifting people. Good people around you will help you build self-confidence. If you want to build up your confidence, do something new every day. Each of these small acts will add to your confidence and also make your life more enjoyable. The most sacred thing in life is self-confidence because it is the secret of all miracles. When you have confidence in yourself, you arouse everything that is stronger, greater and superior in you. In consequence, the more confidence you have in yourself, the more you will attain and accomplish. A person who knows the power of self-confidence walks a path of inner growth and achievement. With self-confidence a person of mediocre ability can achieve more in life than those with exceptional talents and little self-confidence. Supreme self-confidence is a birthright for every person, so isn't it about time you claimed yours? Five easy ways to lower blood pressure using one grapefruit. Have you had your lycopene today? If you ate a green salad with fresh chopped tomatoes, then you not only got a healthy dose of this powerful antioxidant, but you have also taken significant action toward lowering your blood pressure. A recent double-blind study conducted in Israel has confirmed what heart-healthy Italians have enjoyed for centuries tomatoes and tomato sauce, lower blood pressure, and the risk of heart disease. The Israeli study was led up by Dr. Esther Perrin, head of the Hypertension Division of Soroka Medical Center. It involved patients who were already being treated for hypertension, but were not responding well to the medications. 
Dr. Perrin had patients take a supplement of tomato extract. The results were a significant drop in blood pressure after just four weeks. Tomatoes are so effective at lowering blood pressure because they contain lycopene. This potent antioxidant is even the focus of some hybrid tomatoes grown by the Israeli company, Lycomato. In order to have higher concentrations of lycopene in each piece of fruit. Other antioxidants found in tomatoes make this one superfood in the prevention of heart disease. It can even help keep LDL cholesterol from oxidizing, which makes it stick to the arteries and narrow the passageway, causing blood pressure to increase. Even during the peak growing season it can be difficult to consume four whole tomatoes each day, which is the recommended amount for having a positive impact on blood pressure. Here are some ways to get the benefits of tomatoes without having to eat them straight off the vine. 1. Make chili. Using tomato puree, which is a concentrated form of tomatoes, as the base for your chili utilizes the antioxidants without the bulk of a whole tomato. Add some ultra-lean and high-protein ground bison and kidney beans with minced garlic and onions and cayenne pepper, and you have a heart-healthy main course and a full day's allowance of tomato. 2. Since using olive oil with the tomatoes enhances the curative quality, make your pasta sauce red with tomatoes, tomato paste and olive oil to saute the garlic and onion. Tomato paste used in making sauce contains more than 10 times the nutrients of a single tomato. 3. Have a fresh salad as a side dish to either of these entrees, and cut one whole tomato on top. You'll get one quarter of your tomato intake right there. 4. Drink tomato juice. It is better to make your own fresh juice so that you can control the sodium. Store-bought juices can be high in sugar and sodium-based preservatives. If you have a juicer, you can make some incredible veggie juices to suit your own tastes by adding carrots, celery and some low-sodium seasonings. 5. Take a tomato supplement. If you just can't stomach tomatoes, then a 200 mg supplement provides the equivalent of more than the recommended 4 tomatoes. Adding tomatoes to your diet can reduce systolic blood pressure by 10 points and diastolic pressure by 4 points, as was evident in the Israel study. Whatever way you slice it, tomatoes will keep strengthen your immune system and lower blood pressure.